Hello friends, welcome to Relay Tutorials that is relevant, easy learning, accessible to you and today we will discuss the remaining part of operative vaginal delivery that is ventus or vacuum. Assisted vaginal birth by vacuum or forceps is used to assist birth for maternal as well as fetal indications. In UK between 10 and 15% of all women give birth by assisted vaginal birth. And almost one in every three Nelly Paris women gives birth by vacuum or forceps. Who exactly are the candidates? As per ACOG guidelines, prolonged second stage of labor. In Nelly Paris women, it is defined as lack of progress for three hours with regional analgesia or two hours without analgesia. In Multi Paris women, it refers to lack of progress for two hours with regional analgesia or one hour without epidural analgesia. Another very common one is non-reassuring fetal testing or fetal heart rate. Suspicion of immediate or potential fetal compromise that is non-reassuring fetal heart rate pattern on your CTG machine or by a Doppler is an indication for operative vaginal delivery when, in, when you really need to expedite the delivery. Elective shortening of the second stage of labor. It can be used to electively shorten the second stage of labor if pushing is contraindicated because of maternal, cardiovascular or neurological diseases. Largely subjective and it's not very clearly defined, that is maternal exhaustion. When your patients, you know, they just tend to give up and they don't want to push anymore and she's already fully dilated and in second stage of labor. You may use one of these techniques. What are the criteria which needs to be fulfilled? Well, first and foremost, maternal. She should receive adequate analgesia. Patient should be in a good wide lithotomy position. The bladder should be empty. Clinical pelvimetry must be adequate in dimension and size to facilitate an atraumatic delivery. And you must receive verbal or written consent. Sometimes written consent is not possible. Verbally, everything should be explained to the patient, all the pros and cons. Fetal criteria, it should be a vertex presentation. It's uh, very obvious. You cannot apply this on a breach. The fetal head must be engaged in the pelvis. The position of the fetal head must be known with certainty. The station of the fetal head must be zero or plus. The estimated fetal mate must be documented and it should not be a very, uh, you know, uh, high birth weight baby or large for date or macrosomia, which may lead to failure of uh, operative vaginal delivery. The attitude of the fetal head and the presence of caput succedinum or molding should be noted. In case of excessive molding or excessive caput, a ventus cup cannot be applied. Uteroplacental criteria, cervix must be fully dilated, uh, especially in case of forceps, it should be fully dilated, but if you come to ventus, it can be applied even if it is 8-9 cm dilated. Membrane should be ruptured, no placenta previa, again, it's a very obvious uh, criteria which needs to be fulfilled and ideally you must check the antenatal records of each and every patient to rule out such contraindications. Other criteria which are equally important are an experienced operator who is fully acquainted with the use of the instrument and has some previous training and experience. You are able to monitor fetal well-being continuously, preferably on a continuous CTG machine. The capability to perform an emergency cesarean delivery if it is required. In such cases, uh, the setup should be such that you are able to transfer your patient for category 1 or emergency LSCS. What instrument should be used for operative vaginal delivery? The operator should choose the instrument most appropriate to the clinical circumstances and their level of skill. So, never get over enthusiastic. Forceps and vacuum extraction are associated with different benefits and risks. Failed delivery with selected instrument is more likely with vacuum extraction. This is one of the, you know, established evidence and published in green top guidelines at RCOG website. 
general contraindications of course there are certain contraindications which include as i said operator and experience inability to achieve a correct application an inadequate trial of labor or lack of a standard indication just for trial just for some practice you should never choose instrument delivery uncertainty concerning fetal position or station which is not being resolved by examination or real time ultrasound study in case you are not very sure abandon it suspicion of fetal pelvic disproportion especially if it is of moderate to severe grade and there is advanced cranial molding or you know a lot of caput formation in those cases also it is just not possible to apply it and one should not try an inappropriate fetal presentation like breech face brow a known or suspected fetal bleeding diastasis or some demineralizing bone disease as i said you must check all the antenatal records or previous ultrasounds and everything relative contraindications are as follows prior scalp sampling prior failed forceps you've already applied it and it has failed gestational diabetes or pre gestational diabetes known or suspected fetal macrosomia what instrument should be used for operative vaginal delivery the operator must choose as per his or her clinical skill and we must remember certain points that failed delivery with selected instrument is more likely with vacuum extraction though when we compare the injuries especially the maternal injuries they are more likely to happen with the forceps but vacuum is more likely to fail delivery with the selected instrument it is more likely to be associated with cephal hematoma with retinal hemorrhage in the baby more likely to be associated with maternal worries about the baby less likely to be associated with significant maternal perineal and vaginal trauma no more likely to be associated with delivery by cesarean section or with low 5 minute apgar scores or with the need of phototherapy these are certain guidelines or certain conclusions which are recently being published in green top guidelines by rcog what is the correct application you need to separate the labia properly the cap is compressed to allow insertion into the vagina in order to effectively assist a vagina delivery placement of the vacuum should be at the correct flexion point this is done so that the flexion point is an imaginary spot over the midline of the sagittal suture approximately 6 cm from the anterior fontanelle and 3 cm from the posterior fontanelle refer to this figure the center of the cup is placed at that pivot point making the edge of the cup 3 cm from the anterior and just at the edge of the posterior fontanelle all those uh, who are well versed with internal examination or per vaginum examination will be able to recognize anterior fontanelle and posterior fontanelle and in a well flexed head you can easily apply this when to scalp or a vacuum once proper application is established sufficient vacuum or suction to fix the cup to the fetal head is applied a check of the cup should then you know it's sort of a recheck of the cup should then again be done to ensure no maternal tissue is present before a higher pressure that is required for traction is employed there is insufficient evidence to favor either a rapid over 2 minutes or a step wise increment in negative pressure with vacuum extraction operative vaginal delivery should be abandoned where there is no evidence of progressive descent with moderate traction during each contraction or where delivery is not imminent following three contractions of a correctly applied instrument by an experienced operator so if that doesn't happen you have to stop your procedure then and there once you conduct a vacuum delivery what care needs to be done regular paracetamol or diclofenac should be offered after any operative vaginal delivery in the absence of contraindications the timing and volume of the first void urine should be monitored and documented a post void 
residual should be measured if retention is suspected. Women who have had a spinal anesthetic or an epidural that has been topped up for a trial may be at increased risk of retention and should be recommended to have an indwelling catheter in place for at least 12 hours post delivery to prevent asymptomatic bladder overfilling. Women should be offered physiotherapy directed strategies to prevent urinary incontinence. Women should be reassessed for any perineal trauma and for risk factors for venous thromboembolism and if appropriate thromboprophylaxis should be prescribed. I hope it clears out about the vacuum or ventus delivery. I have kept it uh, very brief so that it is easy to understand and it does not get too complicated in your head. We will meet you soon with another video till then. Keep watching and if you really like it, please subscribe it and give us your valuable suggestions. Thank you. Take care and stay safe.